Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Inky Thoughts podcast. And don't be afraid, it's still the same host. I've just shaved off my beard for, well, that was an unfortunate shaving accident not too many days ago. For, so anybody following the podcast will see it grow back slowly, but surely over the next coming weeks. <laughs> but uh, to get a bit into today's topic, I've uh, nicknamed this episode the Hexagon Collector because there's a very specific X to have and some people that are embedded in the tattoo community you could sort of say online might already have guessed who i have as my guest today just from me saying that but he's found a very specific way of collecting that at least originally it was just him doing that <laughs> and he's collected from some incredible artists from the world but before i get any more any further into it martin will you please introduce yourself hey uh thanks for having me on first of all um i'm martin dobson i'm uh, i live in london and yeah, I collect tattoos, I guess. It's weird to be called a tattoo collector, but I think I'm solidly that now after uh, 120 artists tattooing me. So I think I am a collector now. I mean, I would say so. Uh, it, it'll be weird not to call you that, to be honest, by now. <laughs> but it was fun. it's funny, like there was a point where it was like, start people started referring me to that and I never really thought of myself as a tattoo collector. But then you just you just get into it and go, oh yeah, that's what I am, you know? And I guess you get referred to that with artists and stuff. Mm -hmm. But it was weird at that point. I was like, oh yeah, that's actually what I am. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's almost like you see with some art collectors in a way where they, they find certain ways of collecting or a certain style of art and they create these galleries and their lavish homes or somewhere else. You've just much like myself chosen your skin for this particular collection. Yeah, pretty permanent. You can't sell these ones on. No, I mean, uh, not while you're alive, at least. No, my <laughs> wife does joke that she's going to uh, sell my body for research after I'm after I'm gone, try and get some of the money back that I've spent on them. I mean, at least in Japan, there was a very famous doctor at one point that collected uh, old Yakuza uh, body suits oh, really? after they died. Nice. Uh, and a, lot, a fair few of them was, were lost in, I think, can't remember what time it was. It might have been like, during the war or something like that. But a fair few of the skins were sadly lost. So there's very few of them left. But at one point, he had thousands of the of, of full body. Like, he, he removed all their skin intactly. And then wow. had these body suits collected and, like, mom, uh, preserved in a, in a way. I can't remember. If you ever meet Dr. Matt Lutter, who also is in London, uh, teaches in Essex. Yeah, no, I lo I lo I yeah. Lo I've got his book actually sitting on my... Yeah, uh, absolutely um, love that book as well. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but but he could tell you the whole story about that. Uh, I'm absolutely certain his his academic recall, as they call it, is uh, absolutely incredible. I don't think that man forgets much of anything. Uh, very useful as a historian. <laughs> right. <laughs> but no, he I've not met him yet. But he's he's friends with a friend of mine who um who I know in the in the tattoo industry, and he's he, mm -hmm. I, I'm sure I will meet him at some point. I I would imagine so. It's it's weirder that you haven't met yet. Honestly, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but then you know it's a big industry and it's uh, it's a big community and and even though I kind of know a lot of people in it, it's still I'm not an artist, so it's no. kind of like it is a different kind of world. But I'm getting to the point now where I can turn up to a convention and know a load of people there. So uh, so you know I kind of feel privileged enough to be kind of in in the in the tattoo world, but uh, but I don't know everyone yet. <laughs> well, I mean, no, you're. You are in also that other precarious position where you are more known by others than you know people. Yes. When you go well, around, no one knows my face either. So well, I need to even know my legs. <laughs> I, I've only seen your face rarely on social media and stuff like that. And, and, and I just recalled early. I was actually thinking before, before when I was preparing to, to record with you today, I was actually thinking, can I recall what he looks like? And I kept thinking, does he look like Matt Davis, the ink shrink who I interviewed? For one of my previous episodes, I was like, "No, he doesn't. He really doesn't. Like, just recalling, he doesn't look like him at all." <laughs> yeah, no, it's funny. But then, as soon as I, as soon as I'm being tattooed or have my legs out in a tattoo shop, then I quite quickly get recognised. So I would imagine so. And that's even. I mean, we'll get more into this later on in today in today's interview. But that's even despite how many people are copying the same collection style. I would call it with the hexagons. Yeah, I think that's quite a recent thing, though. Um, I think so too. Yeah, like it's there's. I think there's there's a point that happened. It was um, uh, someone put a video on TikTok. Um, just um, kind of this 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 account uh called Inked Abroad, and he just yeah. did a he just did a nice video saying this like yeah. he found my project. And he was like, this is cool, and then like a lot like 
a good few million people watch that on TikTok. I'm not on TikTok, but I was, uh, you know, I put it, I was, I saw it. And then someone did a meme of that and over 20 million people watched it. And that's when it's gone bonkers. And that's literally oh. in the last three or four months. It's 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 really new. But literally hundreds of people have, I, I get. Yeah, because I they get used packed. to only see you very rarely. Somebody would come. Yeah, I think that for a while there was only, a, you know, a handful of people around the world who were doing it. And I was aware of, you know, I'm not aware of everyone, but I get tagged in pretty quickly yeah. to things. And, you know, I knew of a few people doing it, but it was just like, you know, a, an odd person. But honestly, it's been, I, I, I'm not exaggerating when I say it's hundreds of people that have started it in the last yeah. couple of months. It's mad. And it's mad. But I mean, as far as I know, and I, I mean, as I've mentioned a couple of times already, I've followed you, at least on social media, for a long time by now, many years. And as far as I'm aware, you are absolutely the first one to come up with this collection idea. And, it, and I remember it was quite novel at first when it when you came up when, when you came up with it. it. Very quickly became something people in the community, I would say, sort of took notice of this uh, at the time strange way of collecting that seemed so logical when you thought about it like it was almost this moment i remember of people you talked with being like yeah why did nobody think of this before like it's so cool like <laughs> yeah 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 i think that is the, i think that's the case and i think early days when i was going and getting tattooed by people and you know by artists that have been tattooing for a long time and tattooed a lot of people and know a lot of people in the industry a lot of people have been i haven't seen anything like this mm -hmm. who knows what who was first or who was doing stuff you know i've 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 been introduced to a couple of people that said oh yeah i was doing it before you and i was like cool well you know that's fine i i, I i've i've after seven years of doing this i've kind of lost my i won't say lost my ego but i used to get annoyed about it and stuff but mm. now it's just gone so far it's just like it's not my the first thing i say and i get loads of hassle on like on social media about this i'm not saying i own the idea no. or i've got copyright on the idea or i can stop anyone else doing it that's not in any way my oh my, my idea but it's just it's just disappointing when you see earlier when they were saying oh just like it would be cool if people had a different idea but then it's just gone so crazy now it's now i don't know whether it's a tattoo style but it's definitely a collection style and absolutely you know like that is i i, I now get messages and i speak to in person artists all the time that say someone came in and either wanted some hexagons put on them or wanted one filled and they laugh and I laugh and it's kind of yeah it's weird it's funny but I'm you know I, I'm I'm at ease with it now you know most people say everyone knows you're the you're the OG here, but I, I don't really care of like you know I'm just doing it for my vibe really rather than anyone else's that's the thing as long as you're still enjoying it I mean then it's not at least been ruined by it that that would be the that'll be the horror if you if you suddenly start <laughs> regretting. Oh no, I love I, I love it more than ever. I love it more than ever. It's my favorite thing to do. It's my it's my hobby. It's my passion. It's the mm. I, you know I would get tattooed every day if I could, but I'm trying oh. to not get tattooed every day, and I don't want to build myself up quickly. So, well, that's actually that brings me to another question because. I distinctly remember, correct me if I'm wrong, but you didn't start out with as many hexagons as you currently have. But no, no, no. Well, with... The first four, I, I had no grid on me, and they were just adding them next to each other. Oh. Um, and then I took the plunge and got um, a grid put on, but I wasn't very heavily tattooed, and that was quite a big deal to do. But I only probably put about 20 on or something, just on the top of my thigh. And then that got extended, and then it got extended as I kind of was getting more and then as I filled one side of the top half of my leg up I uh, and I'd stupidly gone onto my ribs a little bit um and then I did the whole of my left leg and in that situation I got the hole from my hip all the way down to my ankle the whole thing done in two days over the space of two days and I got like oh. I think we put 90 on in one go so that gave me a lot of extra time and then most recently, I can't remember, it was only a few months ago, I, because I wanted to get up to 200. And so mm -hmm. uh, Nick Horn, who does most of the outlines for me, who lives around the corner from me, um, I said, let's go down on the bottom of my original right leg and see how many we can get on. And we didn't quite get on as, as, as many as I wanted. So I think I've got to find room for another 20 odd to take me up to 200 Ooh. um and there's no room left on my legs so 
probably for symmetrical sake, I'm going to go up on my other ribs on my other side. Ooh. But again, Ooh. I don't really want to do that. But you know, it's all about symmet that's, uh, symmetry, isn't it? So yeah, I we mean, got I've been there that. myself. I got my first ribs tattoo when I was 20, and then. I said to myself, never again, because it hurt so much. And then a couple of years went by and I was like, I have to do it. Can it? It's too yeah. unsymmetrical. I have to get the other side done. Yeah, so I'll probably do that, but I'm going to leave that. I've got I've got enough time to not have to make that decision now. So what, how how many do you have filled in now? Filled in, I just, last weekend, I got my number 120th. And how so, many squares do you have on you now? Because I know you want to get to 200, but how many do you have? So I think I, I think I was something like 20 short. So I think I've got 180, give or take, on me. Damn. So I've got 60 spaces to go. Well, that, let's give you some 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 like slack to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, but I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to chill out with how many I did. Last year in 2022, I did 23 spaces in a year. Mm. So 23 hexagons filled in a year. So I don't no twenty six sorry twenty six yeah. on in a year. So I don't want to be doing twenty six every year because I will be done in a few years. So um, so I'm trying to reduce it and trying to be a little bit less enthusiastic. And so it's about the journey done, as well, you know. Yeah. Exactly, and not chasing stuff and not getting too many done at once and and that. But I think I've done sixteen this year so far, and I've got <laughs> one or two more to do maybe. So. The it's not, irony it's not of how, what well. you just said, and then you still have got sixteen. <laughs> it's so hard. Like, first of all, I live in London, so yeah. every international artist comes through here. Yeah, so, that's a lot know, of traffic I mean, there. It, I just, I always, oh, so, so and so is guesting here, so and so is guesting there, and it's, it might be the one time that I can go and do it. So I sometimes do. Plus, there's loads of great local artists in London and the surrounding area, but also conventions as well. So, yeah, I was about to say, there's a lot of conventions going on just in London. I mean, England has yeah, a lot of them in yeah, general. But... But yeah, two Brighton this year, I got three. But the year before in Brighton, I got six in two days. Oh. Um, so, you know, it's a bit, it's it's too easy to do. I could I could walk past, <laughs> every time I walk past a tattoo shop, I'm like, oh, I could just pop in. And I have to like stop myself. So um, it's more of an effort to not get tattooed than tattoo, get tattooed. <laughs> That's interesting to hear because I thought for for some time and I hope this comes across right. I thought that like that almost become a certain pedigree of artist where you're like, okay, you have to be at this level to get on there. Because it's looking at some artists, they're quite proud when they get to tattoo you. Like they they very much see it as like a a, a stamp of approval on the on their artwork. It seems sometimes. Yeah, I think my, like I'm really lucky. I'm super lucky. People yeah. want to tattoo me. Like I get, I get bumped up waiting lists and i get you know i'm really lucky i'm 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 most of the time i'm being tattooed i'm just really happy that you know that people want to you know have me in their studio and tattoo me i think i get people's best work i think you know i i've got in with people that some people wouldn't else other people wouldn't be able to get in at least for a number of years but also i've chilled out a little bit like when i started first of all when i started i didn't know anything about any tattoo artists like i didn't know about the industry i didn't know really about instagram and i slowly built up my kind of knowledge and through getting recommendations from actual artists but also through the instagram algorithm i just learned more and more and more and i definitely in the early days did exactly what you said and you know how many instagram followers someone had was a you know not not that exact thing but if someone was big and famous that i was like oh i want to get tattooed by them um mm. these days that's less so you know obviously there's yeah. people out there that are you know industry legends or or you know for whatever reason they're big and you want to get tattooed by them but more and more these days it's about just connections and loving art mm. and I've got I've got tattooed by loads of people who are tiny and maybe people wouldn't have heard of and actually me posting their their tattoo on my Instagram is better for their them than you know sort of paying it back a bit, in a way. but I but it's really now about the art or about a yeah. specific situation or a country I'm going to or a town I'm visiting of like who who tattoos there can I get something mm. you know anytime I go to a new city or country I get try and get tattooed there and but i think um, that that actually plays into a to a, a misconception i think a lot of young people that see you uh, younger collectors or younger people getting into tattoos have where they see your tattoo style that they think oh they're small so they probably don't take long to do 
which is the thing that some of the stuff you have takes that'll be a day session i would imagine and some of them uh no not too bad most of them are kind of two or three hours maximum like mm. um it is a small it is a small area and you know even though it's funny lots of tattoo artists that i get tattooed by they because of the position they're in in the industry or the experience they have the number of years they only really do big large stuff yeah. so i get hit all the time this is the smallest tattoo that i've done for years <laughs> um so that's quite good but also i think it, again a lot of people put a lot of time and effort into it mm. and probably are slower or more tick more meticulous than they might not be in, in an, with, with another design or with another person they're working with because a they know it's going to be seen but also because it's a small area and they're trying to get their style in there, a recognizable design, whatever that be. And it's not an easy task. Like I've seen, you know, 20 year experienced tattoo artists mm. sweating because they're trying to get something in there that yeah. makes sense or it's hard and people challenge themselves, which is great. And I love. Absolutely. Um, but uh but yeah, no, I think, you know, the average time I, I, it takes to do one is a couple of hours. So I always say I'm kind of cheating. I, 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 I <laughs> However badly the pain is, it's only a couple of hours. It's not too bad. I've, you know, I've got half my back done 20 years ago. I know I know what long <laughs> sessions are, but I don't do that anymore. Oh. I've really, done, I've it's done. fair. It's not cheating. It's just being yeah. smart. Work, yeah. work smarter, not harder. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get a, uh, I'm going to get a sleeve next year. And um, Ooh, wow, nice. Uh, yeah, Claudia, who's going to do it, I kind of want to have the chat with her whether she'll do three-hour sessions rather than five- or six-hour sessions. But that begs the question, is it going to be a sleeve just or is it going to be the hexagon thing again? No, no, it's going to be a sleeve. Like, I have oh, right. a lot of people have said, like, do a hexagon sleeve, but I really like the idea of a long session, like, long experience with one artist, maybe two oh. artists, but one artist where... There's a design right. process. There's the outline process. Right. There's going back. Like I haven't really done that in all of the tattooing that I've had on my body. Like mm -hmm. that's you know you've got big big pieces and it's like a different experience. <laughs> and and I want to experience that. I want to yeah. you know go back month after month over a year and yeah. get a big piece. And I I'd like the idea of having a, a, a it's probably going to be a traditional Japanese um a Ooh, nice. And Which just... weirdly, in a way, the way you look at the way that all the Rasumi is designed, it sort of fits with the hexagon thing without being the same thing. Yeah, well, yeah, I think I think so. I like I'm less worried. Like I've got all different styles all over the place, you know. So I, I'm kind of yeah. I've got to the point now. I'm pretty flippant about what the <laughs> tattoos. Is. Like, hence, I've got a dick drawn on me. You know, what I mean, it's like you know, it's uh, it's it's. It's less about, I say this now more regularly than not, it's less about the actual tattoos and more about the experience, the the the, the, the connections. People, all, of, all of that stuff is, I'm much, that's what I get more out of this project than the huh. actual artwork. I'm lucky, the artwork's great and I love it and I love good tattoos and I love seeing them and I love watching them age and, and the healing process and watching beings get tattooed. I love that, but I don't really care now. I've got so much hmm. stuff on over me. I'm not going to get shit tattoos, but I don't think too much about composition mm. as a whole. So yeah. I'm not really worried about having whether a sleeve mm. looks weird next to whatever. It's like, it's fine, you know. I don't think I would either, but it's also, uh, I would imagine, now I'm not in your shoes in this sense, but it sort of would become a bit old hat if you just did a full sleeve of hexagons as well. Yeah, well... Yeah, possibly. I like it's great because I get to meet more people, and that's what I love doing. And I eventually will run out, and then I'm going to be like, "Am I? What am I going to do?" Um, but yeah, I just, I just think, I, as I said, I just think it's a different experience doing a mm. long form, multi session, one piece tattoo on a whole of your limb. You know, I think, uh, you know, lots of people do that, but I haven't done that. So that's why I'm like, oh, that's what I'm going to do, you know. Oh, yeah, I get that. But also, I think I think back to something else you said there with the connections and the experiences. It's kind of interesting because your body sort of also become a forum from which other people draw connections with each other. Like artists and other people will talk about, like, 
haven't gotten to, to you, both of them are planned. I even saw some of the, the interesting stuff you've done with them where I think Beth Rose and one of her colleague friends in the industry did one where they had, had a half each next to each other. They did a Yeah, yeah. So Beth stuff. and Kat, um, they, yeah. it was, I was speaking to both of them separately, actually, but wanting to get tattooed by them both. I didn't realize they were good friends with each other. Oh. And and when they realized I was talking to them both, you know, we worked it all out just through random direct messages on Instagram. I was like, oh, you guys should collaborate. And I'd never done a collaboration piece on my Hexkins. And they were super excited about it. And they're like really good chums. I mean, it they, looked sick. It looked yeah, so it good was, as well. It was amazing. But it, it, again, about this, the, the tattoo is amazing. But the day we had was much better because oh, they did it together on the same day they did it together That's they live awesome. they did live at opposite ends of the country they came together they had it was the first time they'd ever collab- collaborated together so they were that oh, i was wow. just like some third party in the room and they were just having <laughs> you were just great. the medium like you were just yeah the- <laughs> no it, it was it was a real fun time and they were more excited about tattooing a collaboration together they were they were happy they were really excited about tattooing me and we got on really well and it's great but they were so happy about tattooing mm. together and they come up with this great design that made both of their styles individual but connected and um they did an amazing job and they're just such lovely people that we just i we mean spent- this among my favorites in your collection both their pieces i think my, yeah. my main favorite and it's not because she lives in my city but the one nina did on you is quite incredible as well yeah, and I think, I think off the top of my head, that was the first one that I did on my left leg. So there was ninety spaces, and she just filled one of them. So it was quite a big deal. Um, yeah, that it, is like, start, starting a new. As we talked about uh, earlier, pressure is on, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I think that's. I think I'm right in saying that. I forget now. There's been so many. Um, but uh, but yeah, that was great. That was you know that was another one of those ones that. I think me and my wife had just decided we were going to go and visit Copenhagen. And then I just started looking, mm-hmm. you know, looking at shops, looking at Instagram, finding people. And I came across Nina and uh, just hit her up. And, and yeah, we did, I was like, you know, a few hours in, in our long weekend in Copenhagen. It's great. Um, great. So, you know, yeah. So yeah, that, that, that was a good one. There's honestly, it's hard for me to talk about because there's just so many. I, mean, all, the, I haven't got any bad tattoos. About. <laughs> but I mean that's the thing you were talking about before you focus so much in the experiences and so many cool stories tied into a lot of your the tattoos you've gotten I mean even I, I don't think anybody but yourself will know every single one of the stories and, and with how no. many you're getting you might not even well, remember well, I don't even completely. know all the stories I, I, I'm, I'm actually I've been told over the years like you've got to put this down in the book and I've actually started doing a book yeah, for it good, yeah. and I'm going to do the first 100 um so one to 100 yeah. as, as a book and then an, a second volume in five years time or whenever I finish um but I'm doing a page for each tattoo mainly it's going to oh. be mainly it's going to be like photographs and all that so but I'm going to write a small bit yeah. of text about each one like something about the experience or the tattoo or the artist or whatever it is like not formulaic try and do something different but just trying to remember back to them <laughs> like, i mean what? you already you already got, get me like aching to get this book already like yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> such it a tattoo be, it's, it's, i really want it this book it should be good i'm actually just like my kind of plan with it is just to do not i'm going to do more than this copies but the real idea i don't want i my plan isn't to do it as a commercial thing. I'm not here to oh. make money out of it or sell lots of them, but I want to make enough so I can give one to every artist. So they just, you know, so they get something that hopefully they really like yeah. and they can put on the shelf. Um, and, you know, I'm sure there'll be extras that if people want them, they can buy them. But um, but really, I just, I, it's, it's like a, hopefully it's going to be an artifact that is like, you know, something that people, you know, like to own and, and know that they were part of it. And I'd imagine so. I, mean, so I could like, easily yes, imagine so. Yeah, but just remembering back to like, because every, <laughs> every every session was brilliant in its own right, but it's, you know, the one that was five years ago at this convent, it's like remembering something and if, something always comes to mind, but I'm not a writer and I'm not a uh, that hugely academic. So mm. I'm just putting it together and then I've got a journalist friend who will make me sound more intelligent than I am. So that's uh, <laughs> got your own spin doctor in the house <laughs> exactly that at least that at least make sure my punctuation and spelling is okay you know i ask it but i mean i imagine actually 
sorry to get a bit uh, nerdy as a sociologist here. I imagine people into tattooing and memory re- research into memory and stuff like that would be quite fascinated in how the tattoos themselves might assist you in remembering stuff. Yeah, well, yeah, well, I've got a, a pretty, pretty permanent and obvious marker for that uh, that experience. Um, I've just got a terrible memory anyway. Um, <laughs> I misspent youthhood. I, 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 I don't remember a lot of stuff, you know, <laughs> long term. But, um, but no, you're right, and you know, it only takes a bit of time of thinking about the tattoo and where we were and what the situation was, and there will always be something coming up. I'm not writing you know, paragraphs and paragraphs about each one. I just want something interesting that hopefully when people read it, they go, oh, that's that's a cool little thing to yeah, know. And, and also I'm asking a lot of the artists to write, if they're happy to write, you know, a couple of sentences and then put that in. So, you know, it's we'll see. We'll see whether this oh, actually comes I've, to pass. That just, just made it fun. even better. Like, I really... Dude, this is being teased to some extreme extent for guys oh, like I, don't, I, don't, I really want this book now. I don't want to do that because that's going to put the pressure on. Um, but uh, no, I just, you know, oh. even if it doesn't get done quickly, I just, yeah. I want to do something that makes um, oh. makes it worthwhile, you know. No, I absolutely get it. A fun thing talking about the artist, and the, we got a little bit into it before. Is it always the artist that come up with the idea for what's going to be in the hexagon? like 99% of the time. Oh. Um, I think there's been two, is it more than two? One, two, three. There's four I can think of off the top of my head that it wasn't complete free reign. Um, oh. One was a uh, portrait of my dog. So it's like, I could only do a portrait of my dog. Yep. Yep. Um, another one, I, I I used to have a house, ra- a, a house rabbit and Matt Rule. Do you know Matt Rule? Heard of. Not yeah, now. he's he's now over in New York at Inked, but he he does really cool, fine line, black and grey mm. kind of portrait style. But then he'll put like a cartoon head on it. It's sick. It's really good. And <laughs> he did my rabbit with Bugs Bunny's head on it. Um, but that was his. I've definitely, see, I've definitely seen his stuff. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know he's 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 amazing. He's yeah. fucking amazing. Um, and then. Um, I got I I'm a football fan and I got a, an Arsenal crest um, put in one of the hexagons uh, like as a, a, a patchwork one. Um, oh. So that again was I define that. And then lastly, I uh, a, a UK I well he's he's actually um, uh, Italian, but he's he's been in the UK for years. Danny Cupio, he. I wanted to get there's a there's a there's a street artist in the UK called Stick and he does like stick men like mm-hmm. murals and it's it's sick. I've loved him for Oh, is that years. the tower thing? Yeah, yeah, he's done yeah. yeah, yeah. So he does them all over and it, I've loved him for years. And so I I spoke to him and said, Would you be happy if I put one of the designs in a hexagon? And he was like totally cool with it and said yes. Nice. And then I was trying to get someone who could do that just even though it's a very simple composition mm. do that justice and Lau hardy um recommended um danny so i went there and danny did that but his danny's work is so good i was like well you've got to do your own one as well so he's the only one that's done two um, all right fuck it up yeah because he did one that wasn't his style like it, yeah. it was it was what i wanted to do so it wasn't fair to like not let him he got an extra bit of real estate an extra plot exactly. of land <laughs> yeah which i think is only fair so so that i think that's probably from what i can think of top of everyone else is just like free reign and they they find it so like some people are cool with it some people want me to help them decide some people are just like no you tell me and i'm like i, I always try and push them to come up with it and them to decide because i think i really want them to do that i like that's yeah. what i love about it i love going into a session and not knowing what i'm going to get it's brilliant and um, i mean it's a step it's further from that. what i do i usually have you know an idea and then i find the two artists that i really like their style and they go in and say for example uh, kaya up in scotland here one of my favorites who's done two to on me for one of them i just said hey i want a vampire lady great and i like brunettes that's it <laughs> Uh, but then, but then, I think probably that's quite a lot for an artist to go on. To just yeah. actually saying, absolutely, you can, you can do it. anything. Yeah, blow some people's minds because they're. Just well, like, I'd imagine so. Like, like, that like is Spotify. a lot of pressure as well. Like oof. you know, now we've got access to every piece of recorded music in the mm. world at our fingertips. It's so hard to choose something. 
and it's the same for an artist i guess you know you give them complete free reign they're like what what do i do but yeah people get to the get to it in the end and and now people kind of don't want to double up too much on on subjects that i have but then there's only so many tattoo subjects and tattooing that you can do so you know i i've got lots of eyes on me <laughs> there's a lot there's a lot of <laughs> lot of them being just eyes or um eyes and creatures or eyes and face and stuff like that I've, uh, got, I've got i've probably got a few hundred on me <laughs> but uh, also uh, the four-part face if you get what i want to talk about yeah. that collaboration was that like with the one with death and cat or did was that more separate so yeah no that was recent and that was um nick um from the church i've wanted to get him uh tattooing me for years and we We've talked about it for ages. He's always like, yeah, we'll do it. I saw him at conventions, but he always does like big two-day pieces. And it was never like, he couldn't even, even though it's a small tattoo, he couldn't fit me in. And so he was like, you're going to have to come up to Birmingham and get tattooed up here. And and it just, you know, it, one of the things that just took quite a long time to, it never, we never did it basically. And then this year at Brighton, I was like, we've got to do it. And he's like, yeah, great. And we talked and we were like, let's do it this year. And then I had the idea. I love so many of their artists there. Like they've got, mm, they've yes. got such a high caliber of artists there. I was like, would you be up for doing a little collaboration with some of the guys from the studio? And he's like, yeah, that sounds cool. And he said, we'll choose some people. So I, you know, I had, I had some artists from the shop that I liked as well. And I hit, I told him and he goes, okay, well, we're up for doing it now. We've just got to find a date that we can all do. And you know what? It's like, I, I assume you know what it's like, like her, Getting tattoos to be t- tattoo arts to be organized is like herding cats. It's like oh, um, you know, trust me, the the people that I've, I have the most difficulty, even though I love having them on my this podcast, tattoo artists are very difficult to get on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and to get to reply. Yeah, and yeah. So I, so you know, I've got very um, you know, at the start of this uh, collection, I used to turn up for for um appointments and expect to be tattooed straight away and then you know after waiting around for three hours and just being like you get to you get used to tattoo time and you just get chilled out and just go you know this is only going to take two hours but it's going to take a whole day so that's fine but um but no they they were kind enough they all took they all took a sunday and i went up to the studio we spent the whole sunday in their studio just just the five of us and um they tattooed me one after the other each of them took about two hours and the, the design, I knew they'd smash it out of the park, but the whole idea was like choosing, they all had quite very different styles. Styles, yeah. Like, oh, it would be really cool to have one image with all of your different styles. Mm. And so it was kind of my idea, but what they actually did was just blew my mind. I mean, they like, smashed it. It's an incredible oh, collaboration. It's just, it's, I think it's, I definitely think it's the best tattoo oh, I, I mean, have. If anybody I'm listening that haven't checked out Martin's, instagram yet and seen this piece it's 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 a face made out of four the hexagons and each hexagon has a different style to it to two yeah. style to it it's absolutely yeah. incredible oh it's 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 just it's mind-blowing and it's just you know everyone who sees it says the same and i'm just so lucky i got it like at sitting down for eight hours and getting tattooed pretty much constantly was not my funnest day but oh um, and it's a, even with the four hexagons it's a pretty concentrated area for eight yeah, hours yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly and but that you know it was great for them to do it but also you know i knew they were good and it would be good but i was massively you know over it was just it's just i couldn't believe it It blew my mind like i've got so many good tattoos but i still think yeah i definitely think composition wise and just the fact that they got all of their styles to link so well together but look so different it's you know it's brilliant speaking of composition because i've been wondering this for for some time uh do you pick which hexagon they get or what area they pick a hexagon in or anything like that? Or they or do the artists choose a place? No. So I've got a couple of rules I try and live by. Yeah, I've mm. I've made mistakes along the way, but I try and do black and grey and then have the all the hexagons surrounding it in the circle around it as colour. So oh. then it kind of so it has some form of composition, but also sometimes I make mistakes because they're not all next to each other and there's there's <laughs> there's spaces between them but also um where it's color I try and not have a concentration of the, lots of the same color so if mm. there's one that's mainly red and someone else is doing another red one we'll try and keep those apart from each other where okay. we can 
So there's a little bit of thought goes into it, but there's a lot of different spaces. And right. and also the other thing is I too often go for easy spaces as far as pain is concerned. So I'm just <laughs> left with a lot of really horrendous spaces that I've got to fill. And so I've got a lot of knee ditch and inside a thigh and all this sort of stuff, which I move away from every time uh, <laughs> I have a tattoo. I think I really should do that this time. And then I'm like, yeah, do I really want to sit there go and through have a knee ditch tattoo for two hours? <laughs> So, um, yeah, so, but that's kind of the idea of it, really. Um, but again, I'm reasonably fluid about it. I think there's so many different styles there. There's so many different mm. colours. There's so many different ways of tattooing. Everything's going to age differently. You can't be too worried about it, I, oh. in my opinion. I mean, I haven't seen a style you don't have yet. I can think of one. I, think of, I can think of one style I don't think you have yet, actually. What's that? I don't think you have cyber sigilism, that new really finicky tribal thing a lot of the youngsters get yes no i don't have that i don't have that and but that's it because yeah technically no, I, the, I don't the, really the have stigma much... thing could 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 be ignorant style even though it's, yeah. i don't think it is but no i think I, I i don't have much or any of like that kind of like that really fine line All right. style where it's just like you know a lot of you know, I I probably unkindly call it hipster style tattoo. <laughs> uh, everyone in LA is getting them, and I'm like, I wonder how long they're going to actually last. Like, yeah, uh, I'm I like, worry about that too. Yeah, uh, and so I haven't really got that, and I don't know whether I really want it. But then, if someone can do it, and I'm I like their style, and I'm happy to be the experiment to see like how well it holds up against. It's it's interesting. Chris Garber, who you know, one of my I I was part of the um Miami generation and the casualness uh, with which you dropped his name right there was uh, oh, quite astounding. Well, <laughs> well no I, I I he's a fucking hero to me but he was oh, like he, he said to me afterwards he goes you're going to be an in interesting like um case study in how different styles age against each other yeah actually yeah it's like it's quite interesting it's on the same body with the same type of skin in most areas and this, exactly. all this stuff. So, that's actually really fascinating yeah exactly so i'm already seeing kind of that in, in action and um you know i've got tattoos that i know aren't gonna you know hold the test of time when you're talking about 10 20 years but i don't really care <laughs> like you know it's part of the, it's part of the fucking part and parcel you know like. exactly exactly and and I, and I like that idea that you know, we'll see how this the, these things you know move along. But yeah, I don't have that. I've seen like people doing these like three D tattoos where they put like a three D mask over and it changes yeah, yeah, yeah. things. And then the ones that are neon, where they put like a not neon, but they put a, like a blue light over and it changes. Which is quite interesting. I'm always up for trying to get new ideas, and there's nothing uh, I would do. I really would love. To, I really would love to have the the guts to get like one completely blacked out and then have scarification over it but i don't think i have i don't think i can bring myself to do that um as much as i'd love to i think that's <laughs> a little bit of a step too far for me so far so but i'd love to do different types do of... you have a blacked out one yet at all no i blacked out no not yet uh, so um, we've got two styles you don't have yet three styles <laughs> i've got i've got i've got some i've got fully colored in one two that are fully colored oh. in. oh yeah yeah i yeah, remember uh yeah. orange I've got one that's orange that was Nick who did all of the um yeah. he did my whole leg of doing the square, the hexagons, like the outlines. Oh. And then I was like, well, you've got to fill one in. He's, you know, he's been tattooing 20, 25 years probably. And he's amazing. And he's like, I'm just gonna colour it in. And I was like, perfect. Um, <laughs> uh, that's a then, good inside joke as well. It's like, oh yeah, you're really great. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, in, and, and and it gets pointed out loads. And then um I went to, do you know Alex Binney? He's like a bit of a legend in the UK scene. Mm. Um, owned into you in London, which is a, you know, he's 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 part of kind of UK tattooing fabric, absolutely. And he, I went to his shop in Brighton and he coloured one, one in red. He's like, I guess if you, if you were going to say anyone is a colour, he's quite red, like he wears red. A lot of his tattoos have red influence and the fact he just coloured it in red was great perfect but um <laughs> but yeah so so even that's been you know not right. that i've had that twice but i don't know if some maybe someone will just black one out we'll see maybe that that's you know that almost sounded like a euphemism just blacking one out like <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah, actually, well, so, yeah, that maybe sounded kind day, of rude there martin yeah <laughs> maybe maybe one day that i won't like one enough that it gets covered over in the black Locking lodge up. <laughs> 
that sounds oh that sounds horrible that sounds like <laughs> such a slight like it's just like oh this one's no longer cutting the mustard they'll yeah, black exactly. it out <laughs> how horrible would that be for now an artist will pinch you someday <laughs> i guess it happens people get tattoos covered up all the time but oh, um, yeah, usually because they're not good <laughs> Oh, oh, indeed, because they have a falling out with the people that did it or something. Yeah, 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 exactly. But but I, I just love the joke of that, like, almost you railing supreme going like, no, this one, be gone. Yeah. No, I won't do that. I, I don't think I'd even oh. do that if I had a bad one. Like, I no. I love I love the story of it. So, yeah. And also, I love bad tattoos. I'm, I, I, think, I think bad tattoos are great, and I wish I had more crap tattoos, because I just think they're so, <laughs> like, they've just got again they've got history to them and right. lots of artists started tattooing themselves mm. they've you know they were crap when they did it they they well i tattooed myself so I, for my number 100 i tattooed i oh. filled a hexagon and it was the first ever tattoo i've done and it's pretty bad but i love it <laughs> and so and yeah. i love the fact that it's sitting with all of these amazing tattoos and everyone they I go into a shop and everyone's looking at it and no one sits there and goes who did that really bad one? Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I think bad tattoos are a good a good thing. I mean, I always had the feeling that at least when you collect a lot of tattoos, I want to get fully covered. There will be one or two bad ones for most of us in there because at some point you let somebody practice if there's a style they don't know, they're not good at, but they want to try out. Like I've done that. I've My two shoulder ones, they they were done by a guy down in Portsmouth actually who, who usually did amazing black and gray work, but that was not my style. And he said, hey, I'll give you an additional discount or a student discount if I could do the, that fire and those waves you want because I really want to practice some color work. Did he do and a good I mean, job? I mean, no, not the best. He's a fucking, <laughs> he's amazing at what he does and he might have become great at color now, but at the time, not the best job. And they, they healed up the way some tattoos heal up, you know. So they're quite faded today, so it's fine. Like I, I blasted over some of the fire with an amazing dragon done by actually Kaya's I can never remember if they're actually married or if they're just boyfriend and girlfriend, but they've been together for a long time, so I think they might as well be married. But Tyre's uh, bow, he did one as well. A guy called Marv up in Glasgow. Well, they don't live in oh. Glasgow, but he did it there. But, but yeah, but you know, they're not that well done, but it was still a fun story, and it was a great, day, great couple of days with Wes, who was a great guy, but it, it was also the first time ever. I mean, I'm six foot, and I'm from Denmark, where I used to be short, but in England, I was never the short guy, and Wes was seven too. Wow. <laughs> so it's the first time and only time, it's the one and only time, both those the two separately, that I've had been in the two chair, and I've been pushed up so much that I couldn't reach the ground. With my fucking feet. I've never had that experience before <laughs> getting tattooed. It was absolutely- yeah, I was, say, I was saying with Steve, Steve Byrne in Texas, he's the only tattoo. I'm six five, so I'm I'm bigger than most oh, people. You know, but mate. he's he's taller than me, so it's always Jeez. it's always fun to look up to someone um, when, <laughs> when you're this tall. It's, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a, a rare. I mean, occurrence. I'm happy for the warning because I'm going to Brighton next year, and if I met you there and I don't know you're six five, I'll get an absolute <laughs> heart attack, mate. <laughs> have you been there before? I have. Uh, I've convention. been to Brighton in 2019. It's quite great. My favorite convention in the UK I've been to is yeah, it's the, great. The Scottish it's, it's... one. Yeah. Brighton's oh. for a second. Brighton's yeah, Brighton's, definitely Bri- second. Brighton's great. It's I love it. Absolutely. I've been three or four times and got tattooed there quite a lot. It's um it's getting it's just, bigger. But there's um, just too many people I know that I want to see again physically and you as well now that I'm gonna miss it now. Originally it was a bit like, oh am I because I'm not I'm unemployed at the moment while I'm doing this and I have some money left over because I was paying tuition fee before, exorbitant amounts after Bre- Brexit prices. Quit my PhD and had some money left over after I paid back some debts. And, you know, I'm living off of that, but I can't help it. And it's a good way to push the podcast as well and do some networking. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's just, just a great a really time. Fun, it's, so, it's a fun, it's a fun place, and yeah. it's a, it's just a really good crew of people down there. And well, so uh, I used to live in Portsmouth, as you know, so you know, it's it's I've sort of used to the the south of England as well, so it's fun to be back sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, thinking back to what you said with, with your shoulders, I really want to get, I really want to let someone do their first ever tattoo, like a, an apprentice, yeah, yeah. let them do their first ever tattoo in a hexagon. But I'm, I'm oh. a bit, I'm a bit worried that it's going to be too much of a, a stress for them. So, oh, <laughs> so I, I think that's cool. actually, you're, you're, I think you're right on the money there. That I don't think it's going to be a problem for you. I think it's going to be way more pressure 
on them. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, if, you've, I, t- I, I, if, you, I, if you've talked I, about, you've got so many now that it's quite easy to say, oh, I'll give a hexagon to an apprentice. It's way more pressure on the apprentice. <laughs> yeah, but I think it'd be good. I think it'd be cool. It's like if you get someone who's just up for it and and absolutely the right sort of you know character and and we get on or there's a reason why to do it. I just think it would be. It's just again about those experiences. It's about a different mm. thing. It's about like I I don't care. I literally don't care. You like do your best job, and if it's shit, it's shit. But like yeah. I just think it would be quite fun to be like that was someone's first tattoo. You know, absolutely. I think I mean if any apprentices in the London area are listening in and you haven't done your first tattoo yet yeah Martin's up. fucking up for it yeah yeah hit me up um <laughs> no it's I just about it yeah, cool think... like, but but as you said imagine the pressure because usually you start you know if that's your first tattoo on somebody else and oh you, you can't place them next to somebody really fucking famous yeah, the grand. that's like, exactly what you do you gotta place them next oh, to the oh that's so <laughs> oh man I, I imagine do you have one by Lal yeah, I would yeah. place them next to Lal. Just be like, here you go. Yeah, exactly. London, London to do history. Do you want to yeah, place exactly. yours right there? <laughs> yeah, no, hundred percent. Although I, I'm, I'm, I'm eventually, he said a lot of times that he's going to tattoo me. I'm going to get Philip Lau to to um Ooh. to uh, tattoo me and uh, and Jeez, man. Yeah, like there's a space next to him, so maybe we'll do that. <laughs> Fucking hell, mate! <laughs> going from Philip Lou to fucking. Yeah. Philip Lou, that your first tattoo is next to Philip Lou. That's that's the one. You, the unnamed <laughs> apprentice. Yeah. That's cool <laughs> though. Some people would be like, someone, someone out there would be like that would be sick. But I think that you also imagine? very quickly weeds out the right person to do that tattoo as their first tattoo if they can yeah. have the brass balls to be like, yeah. you know what, fuck it, I'll, yeah, exactly. I'll do it. I'll dare. Yeah, I'll that's, dare that's do what... that. That's what you want. I just, Jeez, you know, man, I'll make you not that'll over, prove not that you can survive the industry just, as well, man. If you dare do that, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll see. I don't know. I, I don't know. Philip's gonna like. I'm gonna probably have to just drive to uh, Switzerland and knock on his door and oh. hope that he's in. So we'll just see. Drive to Switzerland. How much money you got, man? <laughs> you know, <laughs> how fun would that trip be, though? I mean, I've been to Switzerland. I have my own feelings about the country. And I'll say yeah, it's very if beautiful. you know you're going, to, if you know you're going to Philip Lou, and you know you're that's just true. Like, it's not true. booked in, and you're just going to chance it that's every true. day. Or, like, that's, <laughs> that's stories, isn't it? Come on, jeez, man, that is actually. You might end up with a half an hour tattoo, but it's still got to be by Philip Lou. And it's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, well, no, we've talked. But he's about also it. quite he's, quick, he's, I hear. So it's, it's a yeah, yeah, yeah. We've talked about it a few me. times at conventions. He's given me his mobile number a couple of times, but it's just Fucking impossible hell, to. It's impossible to actually get him to. Do it, but it will happen. It will happen. I'll challenge you now, and I think you may need your your spoiler here for anybody lis- listening or watching. Um, you may need your cheat sheet for this one. But okay. who would you say is the f- most famous artist you've had on you so far? Mo, oh, that's hard. Like, what do you base that on? I would say, I, yeah. I, I'd say, let's go with renowned rather than Instagram followers or anything like that. Like, like uh, well, one that other artists would be like, oh shit, like. <laughs> oh, so, like you could you could go through so many. Lau Hardy is obviously one that people love, right. everyone knows him. I've had George, you know, this is quite UK centric, but I've had George Bone um, tattoo me, who is obviously yeah. a legend. Um, you'd put Absolutely. you'd put Chris Garver in there. You know, I've been tattooed by Tintin. Like these are Tintin people, as well. Jeez, yeah, yeah. So these are people that you know are well known within the industry. And then you've got, oh. you know, I got tattooed by Army James and he, you know, he's probably one of the most famous tattooers. Funny enough, I've met him once. Yes. In Copenhagen because he he right. he, he ran this uh, place that was applying for a job there at the time, uh, Tattoo. He, he, he yes. you know, founded yeah. that with a, Dan- with a couple of Danish guys. And uh, I met him there while I was waiting to get up to the interview. And he was just like, hey, good luck. He was a really nice guy. Yeah, yeah. Didn't think he was that short though. When I saw him on TV, and then I met him, and he was like, "Oh, fucking up." <laughs> yeah, no, so, yeah, but he's like really well known, I guess. You know, because right. of the uh, because of the Miami Ink thing. Um, right. But then, you know, I've been tattooed by, I've been I've been tattooed by um, uh, Steve Butcher, and he's got like a million Instagram followers, fucking so you know, like like or more. So I don't know; it's hard to say what you know. But also, I've been tattooed by people that have got. A, a thousand Instagram followers and they've exactly, yeah. been sick tattoos. So you know, like exactly. it really depends on that. But yeah, I think maybe. Yeah, that, I mean, that, uh, that's absolutely. Also, there's 
I will always heavily promote, which I very much agree with artists about that also think like this. It doesn't matter how many followers you have. You can look at the craft and see if it's a good tattoo. Like, Absolutely. Whether you have 100 or you have 100,000, that doesn't really matter. It's cool if you get a voice and you get an easier time getting clients and that, or you get a platform where you can do something to improve the industry or the community. But tattoo-wise, followers don't make tattoos great. No, it's and and, and I think I think it's crazy now that you can see someone who's an absolutely amazing tattoo, and you, you find out they've only been tattooing for three years, and you're like, oh, "How fucking hell? How the fuck have you got that good in three years?" But but you know, yeah, that's the, the thing with Kaya. She, she when she she when I first saw her work, she'd just been tattooing for a few years, and then a few years later, I got it, my first one done by her. But even after just three years, she was mind blowingly good. Yeah, it's bonkers. And I, you know, I speak to a lot of old school tattoo arts and they think the same. They're like, how are these kids getting so good? But it's amazing that they are. And yeah, so I try, I try and I try and judge on the artwork that I like yeah. rather than the, Absolutely. the following or, but you know, we all, you know, we all choose in different ways. And, and I've got yeah. my people that I really like because they're, I've seen them for years and, and it's all, you know, and I'm not averse to, I'm not a, immune to, getting a load of likes on Instagram. So, you know, once, you know, when someone puts your your tattoo up and then loads of people follow you because of it, you know, we all are oh, yes. subject to that. So, you know, yeah. I try and just choose because it's of the right reason rather than... Uh, yeah, no, none of us are immune to that. I, I absolutely agree. Like, I remember when Kaya put the vampire lady up and some big artists that even I followed commented, oh, that's sick. I was like... Fuck yeah, that's sick. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, totally. It's not even my yeah. work; it's on my body, but it still, you know, feels fucking awesome when 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 somebody did such a cool job on you that other people are accrediting it as well. You know. Yeah, yeah, I'm lucky that happens quite a lot. So <laughs> <laughs> you fucking show up. <laughs> <laughs> the cash on this in which you said that. <laughs> oh yeah, I know, that quite it's, a lot. Someone, again, it's not my that skill. That's a week, master. Like, yeah. oh. <laughs> But it's not my skill that's doing that. So I feel like mm. I can, uh, you know, it's just, uh, again, uh, you know, honestly. It's your discerning I, eye. It's, I'm very <laughs> I'm very lucky. I'm very lucky that I, I kind of stumbled across this idea and people are into it. And now I can get tagged by these great artists. I'm, I, I never I never forget how lucky I am. Oh. Other than other than Philip Lou, not to digress too much, are there any artists that like that's your dream to get one by them in the collection? Are there any like in your oh, sites at the too, moment? There's too many. My wish list is massive, but um, <laughs> that surprises me. Honestly, there's still a massive wish list. It's yeah, awesome man, to hear. Many, but how many like how many tattoo artists are there? I mean, and there's it's true, so many. It's good, true. There's just every country has got like all these artists, and I couldn't I I couldn't have enough hexagons for the people that I I know who I want to tattoo me. But I don't chase them that much anymore. I let things happen. But I think like again, you know. It may get it may get some bad like bad heat these days because of you know for whatever reason but the re the way I kind of experienced the first kind of cool tattoos and really interesting tattoos was through Miami Ink and mm. Chris and Army have tattooed me and I and Darren and the other Chris I've speaking to them both and they're I've got I've kept two hexagons next to Chris and Army so all four of them will be together and little they're little Miami Ink corner. Just, Exactly, but just kind of when we're in the same continent, that will happen. But it well, might that's the be. problem there. They're, they're, exactly. They are over in the states. Yeah, but I get over to the states quite a lot with my job. But like Darren oh, keeps on saying he's going to come over here, and you know oh. Chris is harder to. Um, I can't remember Darren. I can't remember back to the Miami Ink days. Was he's the short guy with the caps on yeah. always? Yeah, uh, Darren Brown. He was cool. Yeah. yeah. So there, those, those ones will be good to get. Um, Nick and Hurtado's, I've meant to have been getting tattooed by him every time I go to LA and it never works out. So that will be one that will be great because mm. he's just, you know, a, a, an amazing artist. I um, think he tattooed Matt, Matt Davis, the ink shrink. I think he did oh, yeah. one of him. I think so. I think yeah. so. <laughs> yeah, that, we've met a few times and he wants to do it. It's just, again, nailing it down. And uh, I, I used to be a lot more organized and a bit like book things in a year in advance or six months in advance and now i just kind of a to try and stop myself getting so many tattoos but b just not chasing it because uh, things just come up you know uh, great great what like you know just for example um oh 
I've forgotten her name now. So I know I haven't. So um, so I was getting tattooed. I think it was Emily Malice tattooed me and Rebecca Vincent, who I've loved for ages. I met her early days at the um when I was getting tattooed by someone else um at the shop that she was at. She commented on um Emily's tattoo of me and she was like, Oh, this is sick. And I was like, went straight under, I was like, We you need to do one. And she's like, Yeah, yeah, totally. And that just happened quite organically. Ah, that's so, awesome. Like, so and I wanted, she's been on my list for years. I just hadn't actually gone out and contacted her and said, let's, she's in London as well. But that kind of, I like it when it happens like organically like that, where mm. it's just like, or I'm going to a t- city and I'm like, oh, who, who tattoos here? And then I find someone, I'm like, oh, I followed them for ages. I didn't, wasn't quite sure that they tattooed in Mexico City or whatever. Mm. And, and I'm like, oh, I can actually get tattooed by them now because I'm going to the place where they actually live. So I mean, that, I, that was what I hoped with the. I mean, it was awesome with the when it coincided with the Kaya and my, and her, her and Marv living in Scotland because I already knew them from earlier going to that convention over there, and then I moved there, and then you know I could get those dudes. But man, I really wished I could have gotten one by Beth Rose as well because like, I've been saving. I even met her at the convention this year, and she really she said constantly, "Oh, I love doing fillers." Because I really wanted to do a filler. Loves, back yeah, the yeah. she and loves doing fillers. Fuck, and then I kept fucking walking by and staring too much when I walk by stuff. So I've creeped her out by now. I really hope uh, I get a chance to redeem myself because I am very friendly, just a fucking idiot. That's yeah, no, no, she, she, she'll love that. She's, she even uh, liked the idea. I, I was thinking of getting her style, but then a lady of the lake because I have a sword up here. And I said, you get to do over that sword. You can make a new sword, but it could be cool. She also loves cover up. Lifting well, that so sword well. up as well, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, I really hope so. I really hope so. Oh, yeah, you got to get back, is, back to she, Edinburgh. She is busy. That is not a woman who has she books is. open. She is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's hard to get on her books, for sure. Uh, right. Now, Martin, mm. not to sour the notes before we, we, we sort of started rounding off, but I am wondering, because we talked about it a little bit at the start, uh, early on in the episode, but how do you feel about the many people that sort of also now do the hexagon thing? Uh, how do I feel about it? I don't know. I'm, I, I, I think deep down, I wish that people did something different and chose a different way to collect and didn't necessarily, you know, do exactly the same. But now it's got so beyond when it, it's weird when it was a handful of people it was kind of a little bit more annoying than now it's got to the point it's, now it's hundreds. It's like, well, what are you going to do? I get, I get, I get um, DM'd by people every day saying, I want to do it. Oh. Is it okay to do it? Or asking me how big the ta- the hexagons are and all this sort of stuff. And I just don't really engage with it. It's like, again, this is not my idea for me to tell people if they can do it or not. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to tell people that they can do it or not, but also I'm not going to just get back and not tell gonna people. Assist. You're not going to be like giving yeah. them the secret source as well. Like, no, I, I like, and that's fine. People, you know, people get, you know, the, the internet warriors are out there no matter what side of the fence you, you, you sit on. And, you know, I, I'm chilled out about it now, but I just All kind right. of, I disengage from it. And, you know, I see, I see, I get, I get tagged in these things all the time mm-hmm. and some of them are good. Lots of them aren't. And that's, <laughs> that's, that's up to the people that are doing it. I have them. seen some ones where even the hexagons have crooked lines, so they're not evenly spaced and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I think, it, I, think it, once... I, I get if it's a bit more flattering when people at least do a good job with it and do it really seriously. Yeah, yeah, no, it's good. It's good to see good tattoos. I just, it's, it's amazing how many bad tattoos are out there, to be honest. It's like, <laughs> you know, not that I, not that, you know, maybe I sound, that sounds bad, but, um, but I luckily, again, you know, I get the world that I'm in. Mm. I see really amazing tattoos all the time and really wow. amazing artists. And the shops I go to, even if it's not the artists that are tattooing me, just have good people in there. And I wow. see wow. good work all day, every day. And I see good work on Instagram because wow. of the algorithm. And I don't see shitty shop tattoos, uh, you know, street <laughs> tattoos that people, plenty of people have got. And I've got oh, I've got loads of tribal tattoos in the nineties. <laughs> They're bad. I'm not saying, but but that's still out there. But I just don't see it. But then now, because of this new collection way, I'm getting tagged in some tattoos. Where I'm like, wow, okay, someone's actually done that. <laughs> that's like interesting. Um, so 
it's quite fun to see that and right. it's interesting but now I'm I'm pretty chilled about it now I just I'm just not really out there to kind of promote it and say yeah it's right. cool I, I'd much just choose a change the idea right. like, I mean that's that leads me exactly to what I want to round up on just to have a laugh between us as well but also because I'm pretty sure I've seen this happen and I'm almost certain you have but it's one thing when they copy the hexagon idea, but I swear I've seen people also copy what's in your te- your hexagon sometimes. That's, that's only happened. I, that's only happened gonna... as far as I know once. Oh, um, fair enough. And it was, and it was. So it was an artist in Russia who I won't name because I can't oh, remember no. who they are. But it's on my Instagram if you go far enough back. And they copied Jake Wyman's Black Magic Jake his design exactly. And that pissed me off. Mate, more, that's a more great for, artist as well, but yeah. geez. But more for Jake rather than for me. Like yeah. it was just that's stealing art, you know, and that's stealing exactly. someone's like, at least come art. up with something else. But it is it is laughable when people do it and it's then a shitty copy as well. <laughs> well, the interesting thing about this, this artist, like it wasn't as good as Jake's, but it was a pretty good tattoo. And I'm uh, just like, if you're if you're talented enough to do that quality, you should be able tattoo, to do your own thing. Exactly, but then maybe the customer said in came in and said, oh, "I want this exact yeah. one." And it's pretty. It's always difficult to know when you don't know the full story whether it's the customer. But he, he really well, as soon as people started it. talking to him, I got very quickly banned from his page. So you know, um, <laughs> like I got I got blocked. So, uh-huh. <laughs> um, but but you know, it's just weird to think that someone's walking around with exactly the same tattoo as me. That and, is weird. And to be honest, like the tattoos that I get aren't memorial tattoos or aren't tattoos where i'm like i really want this really meaningful bit of imagery on me but i can imagine if you are someone who's had that a famous artist and then someone's gone and completely ripped off that must be devastating for some people um but yeah it's fine it's just one of them things i you know but it's funny with with some of the fuck ups you see nowadays with people stealing it Uh, very famously in my first episode of this podcast uh with my good friend robbie ripel uh, from I always pronounce his name wrong, but Robbie from yeah. Radig in Florida. And we talked about some copycatting that happens sometimes. And there's a very infamous one with a Batman piece where they copied the nipple in as well. Amazing. And it's on the Amazing. arm. It's just Amazing. Oh man, that is just <laughs> it's it's yeah, but the you know, I think the moral of the story is if you don't want your shit to get copied, don't put it on Instagram. Yeah, that's the shame about it. You can't really protect yourself against it. I, I, no, I gotta, and, you know, you got to have some thick skin, sadly, as an artist in the social media age in that sense. Yeah, for artists, it's much more um, of a problem than for me. But, um, yeah. but yeah, like, yeah, the pe- people going out and collecting in the hex- with, with the hexagons is nowhere near someone copying a tattoo. Like, oh, you know, no. it's it's a very plus different I mean, world. Plus I mean, I, there, you know, there's some coolness to you having s- possibly... As I said, we can't know for certain whether it was you or somebody else, but as far as I know, you were the first one to do it. it. Must be something cool to be part of, like having started this. Now it's become something like people find it so cool that yeah, others do. Yeah, it. yeah, it is cool. It is cool. And for me, it's about my collection. It's about my experience. Oh, yeah, it's about you know, like that's what I really think about. I don't, you know, I've 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 met people who have got the hexagons on them, and it's kind mm. of like it's just weird for me. It's just kind of like <laughs> it's just a bit strange, kind of, but each their own uh, again i don't own the idea i don't no. pretend that i own the idea so it's the it's the world it's the internet you know the internet is just a whole different world and and it was funny that the kind of seeing it all blow up on tiktok it's you you see a, you know i've been doing this and posting stuff on instagram and artists have been posting stuff on instagram and i've got a number of followers so i've got some sort of kind of following and it but bar none, everything has been super, super positive. Everyone been oh, saying how great it is. All my tattoos, they get good comments. No one's ever shat on any any of my, the tattoos. And then as soon as it went on TikTok, I spent a little bit of fun time in the comments. And these are non-tattooing people. And so much of it was like, these tattoos are terrible. They're not going to hold up. Like, these are just so bad. All these artists are bad. It's just like... If only you knew, young child. Oh, fuck. <laughs> but oh, yeah. it's just quite Jeez. funny. It's just, it's just interesting. Like, again, I find it funny that someone can put that opinion. Do they go to the Louvre and say, I could do that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's just, it's just, I think it just shows a different 
um, I don't think I don't want to say a different generation because it's a specific part of a generation, but I would say it's so. just a different it's a different world and it's a different attitude and it's a different, right. you know, I think I was brought up to, you know, know that people's work is their work. I think right. there's a there's a there's a there's a part of this this new generation that is just like they don't give a shit about copying. They're like they don't they don't even think it's a bad thing. Yeah. And, and maybe that's right. Maybe that changes copyright, but um in in the next 20 years. But um it's just interesting that it's a it's a completely different viewpoint from a different subsect of the internet. And uh and yeah, it's just interesting, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, Martin, before we start another podcast, another episode, <laughs> <laughs> we gotta round up a bit because I've also kept you talking for over an hour now. Um but a final little question, I guess, and, and, and I'm sorry if I throw another hard question at you. What's a piece of advice you would give to young people that want to get into tattoos? Get into tattooing? Um, no, not into tattooing. We're not of us tattoo artists. Uh, more yeah. into getting tattoos. Getting tattoos. Oh, that's so hard. Um, that is so hard because what is it? I think find good artists and trust mm. them. Don't don't go too strong on what the idea you want is, because you get people's best work if you give them freedom oh, to do their best work. I couldn't agree more. That's always the advice I've given people as well, that, hey, you find an artist where you like the artwork and then give them an idea. Don't come in with tons of drawings and all that stuff. Don't come in with a really strict, like, it has to be this. Try the thing with coming in and saying, hey, your spin. Here's yeah. the idea. Yeah, and, and you can have expectations and you can have what you Absolutely. want. And everyone, you know, most people aren't as flippant as I am about tattoos. And <laughs> tattoos. But um, but I just think have an idea and let the artist do the work. Like oh. most people aren't artists. Most people haven't been tattooing for numbers of years mm. and done loads of them. It's like pe- the artists know what's going to look right compositionally, body shape wise, colours, oh. you know, all of this stuff. Um, it's better to let them guide you rather than you having really specific idea and being like, I want it to look exactly like this. Yep. That, and if I may add, save up. <laughs> save up, get, pay good money for good art, don't yeah, go cheap. Yeah. Um, also, I think, you know, if you think you're going to be really into tattoos and you're going to get lots of tattoos, Think about the body composition. Oh, yeah, Don't absolutely. get random stuff everywhere. Like some people like getting random stuff everywhere, and I like that. That's yeah. cool. Um, but Too strong, if you but... think like I'm going to get, I'm going to get some sleeves, and I'm going to get um, a chest piece, then it doesn't have to be the same artist. It doesn't have to be the same content. But having an idea of how those things are going to link together, even wow. right at the early stages, I think is a good thing to consider. Even if I mean, you don't sometimes do I don't regret any of mine, but I wish I would have known sometimes. Like, I think it looks cool with the blaster I have or some old stuff I started that with on my chest. And that's more luck than anything that it looks really cool. But sometimes you do think, oh, what if I planned this out better with what's on my chest and it could have looked even cooler? Like, yeah. You know? so but, that's, then that's a, that's but then also that's a hard nice. thing to do. Like, if you're yeah. if you're young and you're starting getting oh, your tattoo, thinking about body suits or chest pieces <laughs> or spending multiple thousands of your currency on tattoos that's not something many 19 year olds and 18 year olds can do so you've got to start somewhere yeah true absolutely true well with with those wise words Martin, <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'm gonna ask you uh, what do you have going on right now are there any projects you want to plug uh anything else uh and where where if people want to see your awesome collection what you get up to your shenanigans where can they go and find you uh instagram is the best place to see my uh, the art that I get and what I'm doing and and any stuff that I'm talking about is Martin D Ninja, M A R T I N D N I N J A, and that's on Instagram. Um, get more tattoos. That's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to get more <laughs> tattoos. It's the reality of my life. Is it doesn't take very long for me to be sitting in a tattoo shop getting tattooed. I mean, for me, it's just the jealousy I feel right now cannot be described. <laughs> As a man who's who's not had a tattoo since fucking uh ooh, fuck, I think it was last year I got another right. I got one. Oh man. Yeah, the, the jealousy, Martin, a couple of the weeks jealousy. ago. 
But I'm but on top of that, I'm always healing. I'm always healing tattoos. Right. I don't have many. Wait, that must suck. That must actually suck. <laughs> Right, Martin, we can't we can't keep doing this. Cool, man. I'm cool. so happy you came on this podcast, to be honest, and I can't thank you enough. Thanks for having me, man. It's been really fun. And to anybody watching or listening, uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Hello, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that uh, episode with Martin Dobson, a man where most people may know him more by his incredible collection with over 120 artists at the moment of recording, uh, having tattooed him some legends among them but also as he told us some people that may not be that well known but to him are incredible artists that is what matters the most and should matter the most to anybody getting it to that you love the art you love the artist and you get it to that everybody's happy about happy about on your body now next week uh, it's uh, february which is black history month in a lot of places around the world and to honor that i'm kicking off my series that's going to be called beyond the gate with uh, uh, two consecutive episodes focusing on uh, African-American tattooers uh, in the US, of course, African-American. Uh, and we're kicking it off with an awesome guy called Loveless Melvin, who has uh, more than a little bit to say about this topic. And, ha- and he's sharing his own experience being a black man in the tattoo industry in the US and how he came into the industry and how he is continuing his work in the industry and trying to pay it forward as well uh, it's going to be quite exciting i hope it's going to be thought-provoking and educational as always and uh, i hope you'll enjoy that in a couple of weeks time